that. Opening tip is up, and basketball is underway here at Horsburg Gymnasium. Ron Yachts, Jack Vasilani, along with you, what hopes to be a historic afternoon for the Spartans. This is a look at the Tartans. They'll start in their deep gray uniforms trimmed in red and white. The back cut, the reverse layup is up, and it is good. Nick Nakassian with his first basket. Ron, as you're watching this game, that's, that's kind of what Carnegie wants to do. They're going to have a lot of action. They drive the ball to the basket very well. They're going to be very disciplined. Not a very heavy one-on-one -on -one team. Those kind of cuts are something that Case is going to have to get used to and be able to guard. Fowler with it. 10 on the shot clock. This is Corniker. Opposite screen. Griff's going to put it up. Shot was blocked. There's going to be seven seconds left to shoot. The defense that time by Sean Oberman. Ron, that's one of those plays that was just sitting there on the end. You know, I think both teams, especially Carnegie, would have just rather grabbed the ball and go the other way. Ryan Newton, the senior, hits his first shot. Big shot from Newt to start the game. This is exactly what they want to see. He's got a tough matchup right down, down there on Hunter. Good to see him getting rolling. Weave out top. This is Holmes. Now along the baseline. The cutter to the basket and traveled with the basketball, but they're going to call a foul before the travel. Foul will go against the sport Spartans. It'll go against Ryan Newton. That's Ryan's first. Yeah, Ron, excuse me. R.J. Holmes, I meant to say not Hunter. Holmes is leading their team with over 15 a game. He's going to be number one priority right now for the Spartans to stop. Very athletic, tall, long, can go to the basket very well. Good ball movement and a nice shot by the Cassian. He's got all five points so far for the Tartans. 5-3 early. These two teams played to the final second, final tenth of a second in Pittsburgh on January 8th as Ryan Newton's tip in. Won the game for the Spartans. Corniker's going to get another look. This is Prendergast. He'll shoot it. He can do it very well. And Mitch Prendergast continues what has been just a wonderful season to watch. Great to see Prendergast getting started early. Oh, ball contact. Going to go the other way. Whistle away from the ball. Foul will go against the Tartans. It's on Kevin Sachs. That's Kevin's first. Carnegie Mellon comes into this basketball game. Their last game was in Boston. They lost to Brandeis last Sunday. Actually, they lost at home. It was in Pittsburgh against Brandeis. A 22-point loss at home, 66-44. And right before that run, they took Emery to overtime, played a really tough game. This Carnegie team has this ability to play very, very well, which is what scares uh, the Spartans on a day like today. Newton in some trouble, and the cerebral part of Ryan Newton knocks the basketball off of Kevin Sachs's shin, and the Spartans will keep it. Ryan was in, he was in jail. He had the baseline serving as a defender, and a defender serving as a defender, nowhere to go, so he just threw it off the opponent. Prendergast from 30 feet, rolled around, wouldn't go. Maybe it wasn't quite 30, but nonetheless, it was a long way out there. It was close. It was, it was definitely deep. Maybe not what they were looking for immediately, but They'll say the, they want to get going. They'll say, the, yeah, if Mitch gets going, you know, Katie bar the door, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, right right now, the Spartans right now on the offensive end are getting a lot of, you know, deeper threes. I believe they can they can drive on Carnegie, and I know they have that kind of skill. I'd like to see them dump the ball in. However, Carnegie's doing a good job of, of doubling the post. Nick Nakassian's been very hot early. He's got all their points. He's going to throw it off the glass and knock it down. Nakassian averages 10 points on the year. He's got seven already in the first two and a half minutes. This is Corniker off the glass. Griff's going to shoot free throws. Hands in his waist was Josh Berry saying, hey, I didn't do anything. He'll get called for the foul, and Corniker's going to get two frees. Ron, you can feel the energy today. Carnegie probably not in a situation to move on to the tournament, but they're not as far as they're misses that one. Not in any position to let Case just walk into it. They're going to play a tough game. These games against Carnegie in the past have always been tough. And you can see the energy right now. You know, we're three minutes into the game, and the crowd already seems like it's hopping a little bit. Griffin, one of two from the foul line. Check the... Uh... The early stats, has Corniker been credited with an assist on either of those first two baskets? The reason I ask, he is tied for the school's all-time, he has, he's been given both of them. Two, two so right he now. is now the school's all-time leader in assists in a single season with 147. And that's Holmes inside. He is a tough customer for the Tartans. 
Corniker with the basketball to Prendergast. Mitch off the glass. He's got five. More on Corniker in a moment. Carnegie Mellon with the basketball up and down the floor. The reverse lay in. It drops. Thought it was going to fall out to Brian Hines, but Josh Berry gets it to fall in one more time. Griffin was a little aggressive in the backcourt. The point guard got free. That's what ended up causing that. I, I don't know if they'll end up keep, keeping up with that kind of pressure as we keep going, but they might want to keep the pace up. Barry and Holmes out on defense. Ryan Newton tried to get the lob from Hines. It hit the rim. Here comes Barry for Carnegie Mellon down the floor. Tartans will spot and shoot a three-pointer that's dropped by Sean Overman. Ron, they're shooting the ball very well, but Carnegie's getting a lot of open shots. They're, they're not really, Case isn't forcing them into tough ones yet. I'd like to see Case be a little bit more disciplined on defense and get back and just make him run that half-court offense that they couldn't score in, at the start of the game. Fowler downhill to the basket, gets his own rebound. Bob looking for a teammate, it's Newton to Corniker. Ball fake, Griff, step back, shoot, missed it long. Fowler almost grabbed the rebound. It's Carnegie Mellon with the basketball and a five-point lead. Long three, missed short. R.J. Holmes gets the long rebound, Good ball hands. stolen by Prendergast. Boy, fast pace. Griffin with the spin, shot blocked. Nice block by Sachs. You know, nice move, a little bit better defense though. And nice hands right there by Fowler. This is at the pace of a game played out on the playground right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very up and down right now. As you can see right there, interesting move there. I, I don't know if they're just doing that on Hines, but they're icing the ball screens, essentially just not letting Bob run into it and run right off of it. Making him run into the stubble, that really, Case is going to have to adjust. I don't know if they game plan for that. Last we left this Spartan team, they were cold shooting the basketball. And that has led to some of the losses late in the season. Last thing they want to do is start cold in this game. There's a timeout at Oberman. Hits the reverse layup. He's got five. And go look now, but Carnegie Mellon's red hot. They're off to a seven-point lead at 16-9 with 14.46 left to play opening half. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is 4100. Jack. Accommodations. Ron Jans, Jack Vassalini back with you. Courtside here at Horsburg Gymnasium for game one of two today in the final game of the regular season for Case Western Reserve and Carnegie Mellon, although the Spartans are hoping this is the final game of the regular season, but next step, the NCAA tournament. Got to win here first. Got to find a way to score and stop the Tartans. Cole Frilling off the bench. Ryan Newton starting today as a senior in Frilling's spot. Frilling the junior. Quick to the basket. Frilling with the block. Ball's loose. Tartans control. Another three. Boy, they are smoking hot right now. That's Jack Stone. You know, that was good D off the first one. He's able to get the board and wide open three. And Ron, the last time I mess mentioned icing the ball screens, you can, you can kind of see there. Carnegie in the past has been very big on just going under the ball screens and making the other team shoot. Them changing this up, K Case might have been ready for it, but it's just a change in philosophy, and I'm assuming just because of how many shooters Case has, they can't afford to go under. Daniel Flory now in the game. He's a shooter. He can hit the, the long-range shot. This is Corniker looking to Flory on his right. Griffin go back to the left. Mitch running into a double-team hesitation dribble, then that left-handed layup on the right side. That's the second time. He has done that. It's unorthodox, but it works. You know, it's a very nice take. It's for a shot blocker, the biggest thing you can try and, as a ni nice jumper right there, the biggest you can, thing you can do is not a big, really big guy is try and disrupt their timing. That inside layup makes it really hard for a shot blocker to come up and try and try and block you. And the hesitation dribble sets it up. Frilling out top for the Spartans, down 10. Cole to the basket. He'll shoot free throws. Fouls on Sachs. It's Kevin's second. 
Cole Frilling will visit the foul line. Cole on the season, 84%. 16.7 rebounds per game. The junior out of Coldwater. Spartans one of three from the foul line to start the game. Drenth come, well, excuse me, Drenth coming in the game, subbing out Newton. They're keeping the size on the floor. I'm interested to see who's going to end up guarding Holmes in, in this kind of case. I'm assuming it's going to be Drenth, but it, ended, it actually might have ended up being thrilling. So Frilling gets his first basket. It's a nine point Tartan lead. Ball fake leads to the spin. Good defense by Hunter Drenth. A defense inside by the big man Drenth, the first year player out of Revere High School. He's a sophomore in standing, but of course everybody missed, or most everybody missed last season during the COVID. Prendergast out top, look who's guarding him. R.J. Holmes, Mitch steps back, launches a three, it's an air ball. Hunter got the rebound, lost it, got it back, triple team. Kicks it, plenty of time to shoot. Still 10 seconds left. Mitch will get another look, needs it, got it. Prendergast has 10. Boy, I mean, Jack, Spartans needed that one, right? That's just a load of confidence right there by Mitch. I mean, you, I mean, that, <laughs> You and me both would admit that was a pretty bad miss on the first one. Next one, nothing but net. So, I mean, that's what you expect out of a player like Mitch, and that just comes from, you know, around a lot of time in the gym. Having confidence in your shot and knowing that, you know, I believe this was a miss, right? I mean, it wasn't even, I might have been a foot off. The next one goes right in, nothing but net, so. He's got 63 threes on the season. Leads the Spartans in that category. He shoots 41%. A little defense, too. 41% from three. Mm -hmm. it, and, and for the rate that he shoots it at, the volume that he shoots it at, that's that's an incredible percentage. R.J. Holmes, smooth as silk on that left-handed layup. Flory looked good. It was a little short. That's a shot that Dan can get to a lot, especially off the bench. But I feel like a lot of teams just aren't really expecting it out of him, and he, he ends up getting a wide-open look. That one just wasn't able to fall. That backdoor cut. Along the baseline has led to at least three baskets so far for the Tartans. See Mitch. Foul's going to go against Prendergast. We're going to say that he kicked his leg out when he shot the basketball. Let's we'll see if we can get a replay on here. Job. You know, job. It, Ron, it's something that a lot of shooters, you know, before, I think it was about two years ago, you know, and I would say most shooters did that. And, uh, and you can see the backdoor cut there that, that Carnegie's been doing so well. A lot of shooters would, you know, stick their leg out a little bit just to see if they can make a little contact. All levels of basketball in the last couple of years have been starting to crack down on it. And um, unfortunately, they got Mitch on that one. Draymond Green made it famous in the NBA. Yeah, yeah. You know what, Ron, there's actually, especially when you're going to your, if you're a righty, if you're turning over your left shoulder, especially for a fadeaway, it's, it's very natural for your for your legs to come through. Um, you know, people like Kobe, Kyrie, Jordan, you, you watch all, and their, their right leg will, as a nice take by Drink, their right leg will come through. Um, however, that the NBA kind of just said they're, they're, gonna, they're not going to deal with it anymore, and it's an offensive foul. Well, Hunter Drent. Got a, a lot of steam behind him. He's hard to stop when he's going downhill. It, hard to stop. I mean, look at the size. 6'8", 225. And, and the quickness on there, it's, I mean, that's just really hard to guard, it, especially going to your left. It, any, any team in the UAA is going to have a hard time guarding that if, if he's able to hit it. Scoop was blocked by Frilling, and Cole picks up the foul. And Ron, one more thing about Hunter in particular, and we've, we've seen it in flashes during the year, is his ability to shoot the ball, right? And I'm sure that's on the scout. Carnegie knows that he, it, I, I believe he can become a more consistent shooter, but has been a little bit spotty. They know they have to respect it because they don't want to let up a shot like that, let him get, get hot. 
This is Stone shooting the free throws, and he has been a superstar off the bench for head coach Tony Wingen. Jack averages 10 points and three rebounds per game off the bench, and he's already got seven in the first nine minutes of this basketball game. Hey, crew, RJ, crew. It's back to a 10-point lead. Hunter Drenth trying to cut it to seven. Holmes went up and got the rebound. They're going to say hey, RJ pushed off Bob Fowler. That'll be RJ's first foul. So look at the stands. Great crowd on hand here. And that young man at the bottom of the screen has got to be Bob Fowler's brother. He looks like Bob sitting in the stands with regular clothes on. Yeah, they are they are twins. They um, Bob's brother John. He actually plays basketball at Denison right now. Well, there you go. That was a great observation by me, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Look, they look they look just like each Hard other. Hard to mess that one up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tony Wingen in your shot right now, 32nd year. At Carnegie Mellon, Coach Wingen's got 346 wins for the Tartans. Corner cool inbound it to Hunter Drenth. Second look at the three, and Hunter makes this one good. Yeah, exactly what we were talking about before, Ron. It's a shot that Carnegie's going to have to respect. He just made one, and you know he can keep making them. Halfway through the opening half. A lot on the line this afternoon on a Saturday for the Spartans at Horsburg Gymnasium. Tartan's looking for that back cut along the baseline. This is Barry going to drive in. Threw it over the rim. It did not go. Ball's loose on the floor. Thor burned down for it. Holmes will come up with it. Kicks. Josh Barry stepped back three in the air. Missed it. Spartans got to take advantage of a couple of Carnegie Mellon misses right now, Jack. Yeah, they, they got lucky there. Nice take there by Thorburn. They got lucky kind of on the other end, but they weren't able to convert off the offensive board. However, right now they finally cut it to a five-point game. They were down 10. They're right back into it. High screen, three in the air. Missed it short. Thorburn with a headband on. Looking right. Hunter Drenth. Corniker gets the screen from Frilling. Griff's going to dish it. Plenty of time, 15 on the shot clock. Fowler to the basket, missed it. And Drenth more. with the rebound. Hunter Drenth up and in. That cuts it to three. Oh, I got so excited, I sound like I was 14 <laughs> years old again there. You know, the, those shots early in the game, Ron, that you were talking about, that Carnegie was hitting, they were on fire. They're just not going down. Top of the key, three in the air. Missed Another it a little one. right. Another one. Great example, Jack. Luke, ball in the air, ball fake, drives, glass, blocked by the rim. Boy, it was beautiful, but the finish was a little short. That's easy inside for Holmes. RJ's got six, stops a run by the Spartans. You know, it seems like a super quiet six. I, you know, he averages over 15 a game. Isn't super, hasn't really dominated, I would say, the presence on Carnegie, but still has six points so far. Cole Frilling's got a little hitch in his shot right now, which is really weird to see, because he is the smoothest stroke going. Boy, Griffin Corniker had a huge block there. That's a bunny shot for R.J. Holmes. Funny, and, and the ability not to follow him, too, and send him to the line. You know, that, that could be, you know, for some people, going to the line is just the momentum they need. Nice hands right there, as you see on the replay. Sometimes just going to the line and hitting a couple is what people need to get going. Back and Fowler down. That's hands. That's a reach. Ten. Nine. Eight. Eight to shoot. Shots up. Good. You knew they weren't going to miss very long. That's a two-pointer from the Cassian. He's got nine points. So after a 7-0 Spartan run, it's a 4-0 Tartan run. Leads back to seven. Fowler, Spartans need it. Rattle would not go. Thorburn chased it down. Luke in trouble, double teamed. Hunter Drent will shoot it. This one's short. Fowler got the rebound. Bob went up, lost it, kicked it. Spartans have it. Ball went out of bounds, off. Ooh, ooh, I, I don't know if that's the case. Nobody in the gym except the Tartan bench and the officials feel that that ball was knocked off a of Spartan. To see it in the replay oh, here. Yeah, that, that was, was clearly knocked off of Nicassian. Nick Nicassian hit that basketball. When you're scratching and clawing and fighting for every possession and shot, 
that's a difference right there. Yeah, and you know, Ron, it, it kind of felt <laughs> a little bit over here watching that the refs were kind of like, you know, we're gonna be we're gonna be done with that possession and then just move on. Even though it, I mean, it, it looked from our view, and obviously we saw in the replay it was off Carnegie. Corniker with defense. Barry's gonna dribble it back out off a screen. Roll did not happen. This is a Cassian. He's been money offensively. It's a Spartan basketball. It's gonna go down. Carnegie's doing a very good job on offense of running off their screens. I think they could actually be a little bit more patient. If I was Carnegie, their, their screeners are, I, I don't think are getting to the spots they probably wanna get to and they're moving a little bit too much. But overall, they run this flex action very well. High screen, doubled off of it. This is Hunter Drent, spin at the foul line. Hunter looking for a shot, gets it, left it short. Hines trying to grab it, did, and almost threw it back to himself. Or what a year Brian Hines is having. He is shooting 70% from the field. That will be an all-time school record. I believe that's first in the UAA, too. It is first. It's 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 tops in the, well, let me check. It might be tops in the country. Got a note on that. And Hines isn't the only one that's having stats right now that's doing well in the UAA. Wow, great. Gosh, you know, we were talking about the cuts right there. That was one that didn't even require a screen at all. That's just great action right there, you know. Great take right there by Frilling as well. Able to get his outstretched arm there for the layup, but they just move so well right now, Carnegie. Well, that's a travel that did not go the Spartans' way. They'll get the ball back, though. It's been an interesting half, Jack. It, it, it never seems like the Spartans have been able to get in, in, into any kind of flow. It's been jumpy. Exactly. And to be honest, Ron, I, I don't necessarily know if Carnegie has either. It's been very all over the place. Same. Oh. Oh, wow. I think there's a little bit of contact there, but. Yeah, but going back to what you are saying, Ron, both teams seem a little bit all over the place. I know that Case wants to play with pace, but I would like to see them as well. You know, look, looking at Carnegie run, these really crisp um, flex actions, crisp screens. I would love to see Case getting a little bit more of that. They're getting a lot of their points right now in transition. And honestly, Ron, just taking advantage of the fact that they have some of the best players in the conference. There's that back cut again. Leads to that open look on the pass. And on the backside, Corniker pulls down the miss. Hines calling for the basketball, almost stolen in the backcourt. Prendergast controls. Case Western Reserve needs a hoop. They had cut it to three. They were down 10, a large part of this opening half. Corniker lifts it up, left it short. Holmes with the rebound. They had cut it to three, but the Tartans have brought it right back to nine. They can go up 11. They're up there the seven and go back to nine, and that's a foul on the floor against the Tartans. Yeah, you can probably see in the replay, arm extended. Yep, right there. That's going to happen almost every, every time. It, there are cases, I think in that situation, if he, if he didn't extend the elbow, you might be able to call a block on, on Griffin just being moving, but I thought Griffin was in good position and that coupled with the elbow, and that wasn't too hard of a call. Jim's quiet right now. Spartan fans looking for a reason to stand and cheer. Team down seven, five minutes left to play opening half. That defense is extended for Carnegie Mellon. Cole's going to shoot free throws, but that defense has been impressive. This is a Spartan team that averages 84 points per game, and they've got 26 with 450 left in the first half. So here's Cole Frilling, 84% from the foul line. One of two on the afternoon, he's got three points. Nineteen eighty four, nineteen eighty five season. Bill Sudik, the head basketball coach. That Spartan team went seventeen and nine. I believe Cole is was it two for four? Two for four. four. Block right shot. There. Prendergast coming the other way. Mitch, one against two, step back three. Oh, it went in, came out. 
Mitch will get another look off of Brian Hines rebound. I mean, Carnegie tried to play with a little pace right there. Case got back very well on defense, exactly what you want to see for the Spartans. Three in the corner. That one hurt. Got hurt, left him way too wide open. Nice shot, nothing but net. Extends it back to seven. It's four threes. They haven't missed many. There was that one stretch of about 60 seconds where they missed three possessions in a row, but that's been it. Yeah. Did you say that was their, yeah, four of 11 right now from three. Case is four for 13. You know, you'd probably expect that to be a little bit reversed with Case's ability to shoot the ball, but, you know, we can see with the score, Carnegie's just playing well. And Ron, actually, you know, looking back on a lot of these threes, a lot, a lot of these threes are just really wide open. I think Case is having a little bit of mishaps with, with the screening and how much action they're playing with. I think they'll probably get ironed out more and more as the game progresses. So they're discussing a malfunction with the scoreboard right now and the way that it displays the team fouls. So they let both coaches know that, that they're going to keep that obviously at the scores table and to disregard what the scoreboard says on team fouls. If you're watching at home, I see at the top right, you guys have the score. Carnegie's got, here in the gym it says five fouls, however, Carnegie's got six fouls. Case is at four, so Case is essentially in the bonus next time. They get a foul call. Ryan Newton off a dribble on senior day. Racing the roof right here in Horsburgh Gymnasium. Great take right there by Newton. Spartans have cut it to two. Three in the air. Wow. Takes Older the air right back eight. out of it, Ron. Yep. You can, you can feel as we're watching, a lot of people anxious just to see how is this case team gonna gonna respond. You know, one of the, as you mentioned earlier in the pregame, one of the biggest games in history. Great move. There you go. Ryan's gonna shoot free throws. You know, there's like a collective holding of the breath in the exactly. gym right now. Exactly, you can feel it, right? Yeah. You know, as we're watching this replay from Ryan, you know, I, I, I've seen it as I've played with him. That's a, that's a patience level that not many people come into college with. That's something, and you know, watching Ryan progress as we've gone on through the years now being a senior, he has so much patience in the post, he trusts, and now you can see that hammer that Nude threw down earlier. That he's was got, fun, right, Jack? Yeah. <laughs> he's got so much patience, so much skill. He, he trusts his abilities, which you can see, and there have been a couple games, Ron, during this year where you know, the team's slow, and you look up, and Ryan's got 13, 15 points of helping him stay in the game. It's a six-point lead. Tartans with a basketball inside three minutes to go. Trailing at Prendergast with good defense. Somebody going to get called for the foul, though. That was on Hines. It's Brian's first. Have a little bit too much contact there. On the ground, though, that's a fifth team foul there for the Spartans. Game has slowed for the moment. Spartans cut it to two just moments ago. There's been the red hot shooting outside. That one falls short. You see the board right there, set it back to 20. That's a big board right there by Carnegie, especially late in the half. Six are trying to make it eight. 220 and counting. Good defense by Frilly. Kornicker almost stole it, Cole did. Back to the point guard. Griffin, eyes up, looking left. There's Frilly, ball stepped in, intercepted. Here come the Tartans the other way. Kornicker on defense. Wild layup won't go. Hines fights for it. Knocked out of bounds, off. A spark. off Brian. Yeah. You see, this is the effect right here on the replay, just getting back. Griffin forced him to go for the left-handed layup. 
Right, obviously, we can see not as comfortable with that missed a layup. You know, they, they might still score, but at least case it's another chance to defend, not giving up an easy two, keep the game at six. As Jack Vassellini mentioned at the start of this basketball game, the Tartans have been known to play to the level of their competition this year. They got blown out at home against the Brandeis judges, but they played the conference champion to overtime and lost by a bucket. And they're playing the team trying to make the NCAA tournament here today very, very well. Fouls on Newton, that's Ryan's second. How does that happen? That, that happens a lot across sports, across age levels. You know, it's a great question. I think, I think a lot of people have probably been uh, guilty of it in the past. I think a lot of people, you know, when, when you're playing these games, Ron, you, you, when, you, when you're playing a big opponent, you psych yourself up. When you're playing a lesser opponent, you kind of just assume everything's going to happen. And in reality, you're, you're basing everybody's assumptions off of everybody's best play. So, you know, some teams come in against a team that's lesser and, you know, they give it their best and this other team gives it, you know, 70%. And, you know, at that point, it's, you know, it, it essentially is even at that point. So that's sometimes what happens. Case is trying to avoid that. I, I think they're playing decent basketball, but I, I think you and Ron, Ron, you and I can agree. I think they can definitely step it up here in the second half. As obvious as this is going to sound, they got to start making shots. Oh, my. How about that? Going oh up high my. for the putback is oh. Casey. 6-7, freshman player. It's back to a 10-point lead. It was a two-point game at 33-31. Spartans been outscored 10-2 since that time. <laughs> hard foul. I don't know if we're going to be able to get to see a replay right here. Boy, you, Ron, you don't see this very often. <laughs> and at the Division Three level. Boy, That's... I had given the credit to Nolan Casey. He was there, but it was Nick Nicassian that actually thunder dunked that one home. Nicassian's got 13. See if Ryan can hit another one here. Spartans have had a little bit of woes at the free throw line today. Ryan made it, just made them right there, six for nine. Actually, I believe they seven for 10, Ron? Yeah, they, well, Ryan's four for four. Thrilling's two for four, so six of eight. There we go, and Griffin, Griffin one for two. Okay. Yes, I didn't see his. There we go, seven. Seven for 10. Well, that's better than what they did against Rochester. Good D right there. Look at, look at the pace they're playing with right there. Pushing up. Good Step shot. back three. Mitch missed it long. <laughs> 48 seconds left in the half. That silence is loud and clear right now in the gym. And Ron, you can it. You can see really clearly on that last play how wide open the lane was. However, Carnegie's structure, right, in their mind is we're going to rather attack that open space with a cutter rather than a lot of teams is, oh, let's try and attack that space off the dribble. Right now, this is a matchup problem, isn't it? Number 25, the Cassian. You know, that's a very similar move to something Cole would probably do on the other end as well. 77% from the foul line this year. The junior out of Olentangy Liberty High School, just outside of Columbus and Powell. How many does he have right now, Ron? He's got 14. I'd make it 15. 15 right there, yeah. Hey, Nick, 14. Back to the 10-point lead. It has been a 10-point spread on multiple occasions in this opening half. Always in the favor of the visiting team, the Tartans. Okay, Brian, you can see Flory just came in the game. They're going to probably hold for the last shot, want to get a shooter on the court. Last time these two teams played, Spartans won on a tip-in. 89-88 at the buzzer off Ryan Newton in Pittsburgh. Corniker will shoot the long-range shot, missed it short. Ball's tipped out of bounds, and it will go to the Tartans. Yep. Ron, if I remember correctly, though, and I, I could be wrong, I believe Case was losing 
for most of the game in that first meeting against Carnegie as well. So, Well, they were down 16 points in the second half in that game, the Spartans right. were. They not were down six with two minutes left. Yeah, not an un unfamiliar position, as you just said. I mean, 16, I guess at this point 10, assuming this shot doesn't go in. You know, a lead that we've seen the Spartans come back from run. If they come out and make the right adjustments in the second half, I think they can do it. Spartan head coach Todd McGinnis quickly to us at halftime. Todd, your team's down 10. In a, in a game, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that doesn't seem to have much of a flow to it. It seems a little disjointed. It has something to do with the guys walking by me a little bit. Um, you know, you can't blame it on them, but you don't know what a foul is right now. Um, and they got, got we can't get a rebound. We got a lot of issues right now. So I'm going to go address them. Hopefully we play better.